Hi, everybody. Welcome to the NAB Show Studio One. I'm Carrie Farinak with Convention News Television, and this is NAB Extra. We are so excited that you're joining us on nabshow.com, and we're excited about all the folks who are watching right here in Las Vegas. This show is a little extra of what's going on behind the scenes at NAB, so let's do just that. I'm going to come down. We're going to come off the set. We're going to show you a little bit about what's happening. We have Bexel cameras here to show you everything that's going on. We're right in the grand lobby as you walk in the main doors at NAB. So let's come over this way. I'm going to show you some of what's going on where there's action everywhere. You can see folks are gathering. This is a great spot to be. This is where the main doors are for Central Hall. Folks are filing in, and I am joined now by Rachel Kopchak. Hi, Rachel. Hi, how's it going? It's good. Rachel is our correspondent for NAB Show Extra. You have been out and about on the show floor. We want to talk about some of the really cool hot things. Probably one of the biggest is 4K, right? Oh, yeah. Tell us about that. So 4K, of course, people who've been coming to NAB for years have already heard about it, but it's about building a network that can actually handle 4K and being able to distribute it. And then, of course, 4K for the consumers. They want to bring it to the people at home watching, and that means putting it on TV, figuring out how to live stream it with, you know, over IP so you can take a 4K event and film it live and live stream it on the web for people. That's what they're really trying to figure out how to do and bring that to the audience. And you won't believe this out there in the audience, but we had someone from NHK on yesterday who talked about 8K, which is 16 times crisper than even HD, which is kind of tough. Really cool stuff out there. We also want to talk about interactive TV. That's a hot topic, right? Yeah, interactive TV. So, of course, you've got that already with a lot of your second screens on, you know, your tablets, your mobile phone, being able to watch a program on your tablet and click and want to learn more about, a, say, a news story or a sporting event or hear statistics about an athlete. That's all sort of available, but it's also about bringing it over the air and bringing that to our local newscasts or newscasts and personalizing it. That's what it's really about with the customers is making it personal to them. So say you're watching a local newscast, you want to be able to click on the TV and hear the traffic report right for your neighborhood. You don't care about wherever the other routes are, but that's what they're trying to build and bring to both forms. You know, it's not just this, the second screens, it's also live on TV. Wow. The industry is changing so fast. This is definitely the place to be to figure out what to keep to do to keep up with it all. Rachel, thanks so much. We'll be checking in with you later right here on NAB Show Extra. We're going to have a lot of different topics here. We're going to talk technology. We've got interviews set up throughout the next hour. And we're also going to talk about hiring veterans here in the broadcasting industry. So we want to address that topic. And first, we want to hear the latest PSA from a group called Got Your Six. Do you know what it means to have someone's back? To have another life depend on you and only you? Where your vision, your defense, your support is the very thing that is the difference in their life or death. This feeling is known in the truest form by those that willingly protect you and me every day. In the military, got your six means I've got your back. Today, Got Your Six is more than a term. It's a way to bring military veterans and civilians together. It's a show of respect for all who served. And a way to ensure that they return home to be seen as assets and leaders. I've got your six. 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 To find out how you can help, visit gotyoursix.org today. You know, I was very interested to learn that got your six obviously means got your back, and it's from flying military formation. Six is the plane behind you. I learned that yesterday, which was really fascinating. This is a big topic here at NAB, and I'm joined now by Phil Oakley, who's with Questar Federal Consulting, also working to hire veterans. Phil, thanks for being with us. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Tell us a little bit about Questar and really what your goal is to get veterans into this industry. So Questar, we've been in business for about six years, and... Most of our employees are veterans. So about four or five years ago, we started working with not-for-profit organizations, Freedom Alliance, United Survivors Fund. And in each and every case, the members that we met, mostly disabled folks, they talked about missing being part of the team. They want to be reintegrated, and they want to be part of a team. 
So the, we started brewing the thought, what can we do to help those individuals? So that's sort of where the initiative from my company came from. Absolutely. And tell us about why it's so important. I know you're an Army veteran, right? 30 years in the service, right? First of all, thank you for that. But why is it so important and what, how can veterans add to this industry? Tell us a little bit about that. So uh, I spent 22 years active duty and I've been working with the government for the last eight or nine since I retired. Most of the military folks, they're used to other duties as assigned. So they may be working on one project that they're trained on, but they're very equipped and they're very adept at changing that and then working on problems that they may have no experience in. So this initiative uh, at NAB started, I'd say maybe three or four months ago, we met with NAB, we were working with the Military Gov Summit, and I said, you know, want to increase the veteran presence? Why don't you have a veterans hiring initiative? They jumped in, they said, this is a great idea. So we started working with the Director of Education from the NAB, and they put all these initiatives. They allowed veterans to attend the conference for free. Wow. Uh, they're doing all these initiatives that, that focus on hiring veterans. Wow. Fantastic. There's so much going on. We appreciate everything you're doing. And this is a big topic at NAB, so we hope folks will get involved. Phil, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you very much. We appreciate it very much. All right, we want to shift gears a little bit and talk about the show floor. Some of the things that are happening right here. There are lots of different areas on the show floor. And one that's getting a lot of attention this year is the Sprocket Hub. Sprocket is for new companies that have a chance to present and meet with icons in the industry, with really big name folks. So this is quite an opportunity. Our own correspondent, Rachel Kopchak, had a chance to check out Sprocket and meet some of those new companies. Sprocket returns to NAB Show as they continue giving market-ready startup companies the opportunity to showcase their products and services to members of the broadcast media world. Here's a look at some of the companies being featured. Fan Inc. Uh, has provided this new platform, a distributed platform that allows any content creator with video content to showcase their very best content in optimal ways across their website or to distribute it to other websites in a manner that's contextualized and relevant for their target audience. The Paladin is the smallest all-in-one streaming studio that exists, and it enables uh, companies to use wireless cameras or Wi-Fi uh, or wired cameras and be able to do the highest quality streaming you can. Clipped is an advertising platform built exclusively for television, and we enable a programmatic advertising for TV asset inventory owners. So we automate the buying and selling of TV asset inventory, and we layer in data to make more intelligent decisions on that inventory. We have the ability to take content from any particular device, input device, and then we have the ability to take that from the cloud and then distribute it to pretty much any consumer device out there, from iPhones to a traditional PC streaming application. Social News Desk is the only social media management platform created specifically for journalists. We are journalists. We created it for that environment to help newsrooms organize, manage, moderate, secure, and monetize social strategy in a newsroom. You have to have WebTuner because it gives the viewer a uh, better viewing experience, it gives broadcasters and advertisers new ways to enhance their revenue streams and make new revenue streams, and it gives you a device that has all kinds of applications in addition to video. Evolution is a specialist in content identification technologies. We serve basically a couple of different segments here at NEB, and the two main topics that we are discussing are in the media protection side and interactive media. So on the media protection side, we provide what we call forensic watermarking. So we make content copies traceable to the source of piracy. So that's going further than actually the, the current uh, security solutions. Sprocket is all about fostering innovation with these companies and more that I will be highlighting for for you throughout the NAB show.
All right, so we just saw a commercial from Bexcel, and now we want to bring on Michael Lay, who is with Bexcel. Uh, we mentioned earlier that Bexcel's provided the cameras and some of our equipment here at NAB Show Studio One. So, Michael, thanks for being with us. All right, my pleasure. Thanks for having us. We're excited that you're here. Tell us a little bit about what's, what Bexcel is showing off here at the show floor and what you guys have to offer. Well, this is one of our smaller uh, modular systems. Uh, we just got a call to see if we can help out, and sure, that is what we do. And I know you guys don't mess around. You do big shows, not only NAB show here, but you've done the Olympics, the Super Bowl. Tell us a little bit about your involvement with those massive productions. Well, Olympics, that was a fun one this year. We had uh, about 30 people there for two months. And most of those guys are back now and turning right around and going off to Brazil to do World Cup. Wow, World Cup. You guys don't mess around, that is for sure. We also have some of your equipment in our control room, so it's not just cameras. Tell us what else you guys do. Oh, a lot of large systems work, um, sort of a renewed push into the digital cinema world. Um, a lot of systems and solutions, really, custom builds. Fantastic. Well, we hope folks will come by and check out Bexcel on the show floor. So thanks so much for being with us. And speaking of Bexcel, we want to thank Gerald and Jay, because they've been helping us out, and we appreciate that very much. So thanks very much to you guys. All right, we want to talk a little bit about what it means to be a broadcaster. And they've put out a special campaign called We Are Broadcasters. So let's take a look at that as we switch gears. You know, one of the benefits of being a member of NAB are no doubt the webcasts. And I am joined now by Josh Miley, who's manager of radio operations. And Josh, tell us about the webcasts and how the members can benefit from them. Oh, it, it's really exciting. We've got interactive webcasts that are 60 minutes long that go over all the different types of industry questions that managers, operators really want to know. And we've got the best experts to get in there and give them the answers they need. Man, that is so vital. All right, let's talk about one of those in, in particular, Membership in Motion. Tell me about that series. Membership in Motion is unique because it's, it comes the biggest departments at NAB, the legal and regulatory departments, the technology departments, the government relations departments. We'll put together a full hour of programming specifically for members addressing the questions that they want answered most. Wow, so right now it's an hour, I know, right? But the program is expanding, so tell us a little bit about what we can expect. Yes, right, right now we're doing uh, essentially six webcasts a year spread across the months. Happy to say over the summer of 2014, along to augment that, we're going to be doing nine more webcasts split across little 15-minute vignettes from programming we've got right here at the NAB Show. That's fantastic. All right, where can folks find out more? Where can members find out how to participate? Always go to nab.org, go to the membership pages, they'll show you all the different membership benefits, not just webcasts, but everything else NAB has to offer for their members to have you enjoy yourself. Fantastic. Josh, thanks so much for being with us, and you should be not only a member of NAB, but take part in these webcasts. So thanks for being with us. Do you like how I change clothes so quickly? I want to explain a little bit about what's going on right here at NAB Show Studio One. We are taping interviews all day, every day that are playing on the screens around the Las Vegas Convention Center, and we're doing live interviews. So we are now back live, and we want to join Rich DeMuro here, who is the host 
of the one and only NAB Show Live. Yes. Rich, tell us a little bit about those shows first. NAB Show Live is basically the newscast of record for NAB Show 2014. So we're up here on the stage at 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. each day, bringing you highlights from all the sessions, interviews with uh, top people out there on the floor, uh, products that we see out there on the floor that are pretty notable, and pretty much anything, it's like a cheat sheet for yeah. the NAB show. So you can come to Vegas, you can sit here all day and pretend to your friends like you actually walked the floor when really all you did was just watch our show. Very Not cool. You don't want to do that. You don't want to <laughs> do that, though. Do that. No, no, no. no. Do don't do that. All right, let's talk about some of the cool things happening. I saw the piece during NAB Show Live on the drones. Very cool stuff. Tell us what else is kind of catching your eye as you walk the show floor and what you see. Uh, well, I'm sort of obsessed with these drones. I mean, you're a news reporter, I'm a news reporter. I love the idea of what they bring to the table. So, you know, you have a, a camera person here, but imagine having that drone just sort of hovering above you, even following you on a live shot. I mean, how neat is that? Um, or you can get shots in places that you can't normally get shots. So you send this thing up and, uh, you know, get a shot of a fire from a different vantage point or where you can't fly a helicopter. So I think there's a lot to do with the drones. Um, but it's also, it's, it's changing right now. You know, we don't really know what the potential is. We don't really know how it's all going to play out. And I think there's a lot of rules that need to be figured out. Um, and most of these things can't fly very long. Right. And people don't realize that. Well, and very cool stuff yesterday on drones in a hands-on piece. I know we're going to have another hands-on piece coming up at NAB Show Live today. That's going to be good stuff. Yeah, uh, coming up in the 4 o'clock show, I still haven't looked at everything, but uh, we have more interviews, more live interviews with CEOs. We'll have some more hands-on. We've got, we've got some funny cast of characters that do these pieces. You know, everyone goes out on the floor, and they just sort of have fun because you're here experiencing the show with 100,000 other people. Right, you're right. interacting with all these different people, and a lot of, you know, personalities are out there. Um, so we always have fun with that. But I think at the bottom line is you get out there and you really get inspired. To me, it's like I'm seeing all these different types of technologies that we can now use in our everyday lives. And I want it all. I mean, I, I really want to just like collect all that stuff out there, put it into a bag and bring it back with me to Los Angeles. Uh, unfortunately, it's not all free. <laughs> That's right. And these Bexel cameras don't really fit in the bag very well, do they? <laughs> no. In fact, you have to have a special bag so you don't break them and all that kind of stuff. You've got to lock them down. So, yes, you can't just transport this equipment. Now, those little GoPros, I don't know, you can stick one in your pocket. No one notice. All right. We're asking for two GoPros. I don't know who out there can handle it, but that's what we're looking for. All right, Rich, sounds good. We'll be watching at 4 o'clock today. Thanks so much for being with us, and we'll be right back on NAB Show Extra. Welcome back. We want to recap real quick. We're at NAB Show Studio One, and we are joined now by Tim Jennison, who's the founder of New Tech. Tim, we're very excited to have you here. Thanks, Gary. Tell us a little bit about New Tech and what you all are showing off here at NAB this year. Well, uh, the TriCaster and 3Play are our big products, and, uh, you know, just newer, better TriCasters. And, you know, it's, it's really uh, cool to see the progression and, uh, you know, the, uh, the TriCaster is just uh, getting to more and more people and spreading out video, video production into places it never was before. Absolutely. We're using TriCaster here in our control room, and actually sometimes there's a crowd forming because they want to see how we're using it and how we're doing it, which is really cool. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about your documentary. Tell me a little bit about it and, and the making of it. Oh, boy. Well, it's called Tim's Vermeer, mm -hmm. 
and uh, that's V-E-R-M-E-E-R. -E -E Vermeer, the Dutch painter, uh, from 350 years ago. Um, I uh, got interested in this about 10 years ago. The Vermeers, uh, when you see them in a museum, they just pop off the wall. They look like color photographs. They really look like color photographs. And people have been speculating that Vermeer used a lens or something. Uh, and I was in the bathtub, and it occurred to me how he might have been able to, to make those paintings. And it was a totally different idea than everybody had been thinking. And so I tried a quick experiment on my kitchen table. Uh -huh. And it worked way too well. I've never painted in my life. Wow. And I copied a photograph and made an exact copy. And, uh, and I go, wow, I, I think I'm onto something. So I started, went online and searched. You know, surely somebody has thought of this before. I couldn't find a thing. Uh, and at that point, uh, I was talking to my longtime friend, Penn Gillette of Penn and Teller. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, uh, uh, let's not talk about show business. What do you got? And I said, well, what do you know about Vermeer? He said, the painter. Huh. And he said, uh, I was at, he said, I was at a Vermeer show in New York and saw these paintings. They're amazing, lifelike. And I said, well, I think I figured out how he did it with a sort of a machine. And he said, what? And so I had uh, a little video on my belt, and I showed him what it looked like looking through this instrument. And he said, I totally get this. And it's very similar to a technique they use in, mi in magic, because they're magicians. Oh, wow. And uh, he said, I understand totally what this is. And he says, what are you going to do with this? And I said, I, I may like write a paper or something. I don't know. And he said, no, this, this needs to be a movie. Oh, so that happened wow. in February of 2009. Wow. And we thought it would take a year or so. And it turned into this epic project. And just uh, a lot of work. And the film just came out. It's in theaters now. I understand it's in more than 100 theaters, right? Well, it, it varies, and they keep rolling it out into more cities. And it's doing really well. It's, it's I think, the number one grossing uh, uh, documentary uh, of the year. And very good reviews, And you know, which is a shock to me, because to me it was just a weird little experiment I did. Fantastic. I love that the idea came to you in the bathtub, too. Yeah. Always a good place for inspiration, right? Warm water seems to do that. <laughs> I don't know why. That's right. Well, we're so excited that you're here, and I know there are other documentary filmmakers here. Any advice for them as they may embark on this in the future? No. Uh, I, I really had, had no idea what I was doing and um, nobody knew where this film was going to go and I guess that's okay for documentaries. So that, yeah, that would be a, my advice. Just let it happen. Keep rolling. Um, but, uh, you know, I had to learn a lot about filmmaking. I'm, I, you know, I know a little bit about I've been in video business, but cinema is a totally different thing. And, uh, you know, we this movie is a little unusual because we just left the cameras rolling just constantly. And so everything interesting that ever happened is right there, in, uh, you, know, in, in, on, uh, you know, in the can. And they had 2,400 hours of material to edit down to 80 minutes. Wow. That's a lot of editing. I respect those editors very much. Tim, thank you so much for being with us and sharing your story. We appreciate it very much. It's a Thanks, pleasure everybody. meeting you. And everybody can see Tim at the New Tech booth right here at NAB Show. So thanks for being with us, and we'll be back in just a moment.
everybody. Welcome back. As we continue to do NAB Show Extra, we've asked Jay Tokars with Core Apps to join us to talk about the NAB mobile app. Jay's company did the app here. Let's talk first of all about what's new. What's happening here with the NAB app? Yeah, well, what's new is we've got an audio tour here for uh, most of the uh, new products and things of that nature that are going on there. That's right in this section here. And it's broken down by different categories. And so if you pick it out, kind of on the idea of if you were doing something with a, going to a museum and you stood in front of an exhibit and you would get the audio about that particular exhibit. We've done the same thing here with a lot of the products that are going and being displayed. And if I take one of these particular uh, segments that are here, if I tap one here, we'll play the audio. It'll also guide you with directions around on the floor map from each different audio visit and stop. And uh, this is one of the new features of the app that's been quite popular, and we see a lot of usage going on with it today. I'm sure because the show floor is so big, it's actually really difficult to figure out how you're going to get all the way around. So you can use the app to kind of plot out your, your route, right? I mean, that's got to help save people, especially if you're wearing heels. <laughs> exactly. They, exactly. They can go ahead and they can use the category filter to pick out the different things that they want to see and it'll focus on just those booths, or they can route from one uh, exhibit hall to the other exhibit hall, and it gives them walking directions completely. All right, tell me a little bit, too, about what else is popular. What do folks use the app for? What else is in here that they can take advantage of? Well, last year we introduced the ability for attendees to be able to connect with one another, and that was one of the more popular features, and so we brought that back again this year. And again, it's been one of the more popular features. Once you fill out your profile, you're going to go in here and tap on the attendees list. You can see a list of attendees. You can actually search on people that you might be looking for based on their company or whatever that they have. But if you pick one of these particular attendees um, and they opt in, so we're totally protecting everybody's privacy. That's an important step, we realize. Request them as a friend. Once they show up as a friend for you inside of your friend is here, and I've got Flavio as one of my friends, um, I have the ability here to share my schedule with him, message him back and forth. And um, we've connected. This is a guy from Brazil that I've never met until recently here. And so uh, this has worked out great. Fantastic. All right, Jay, make sure you friend me on there. I don't know if I'm on there, but I'll find you later. How do folks get the app, real quick? Uh, they can go to the App Store, Apple um, App Store, and search on it through NAB 2014 or the Google Play Store. And also at all the information booths, there's a QR code for any of the other uh, mobile app uh, platforms like BlackBerry and Windows and so forth. Sounds good. All right, I gotta take one of those audio tours. <laughs> Jay, thanks for being with us from Core Apps. We appreciate it, and we'll be right back after this.
Hi, everybody. Welcome back to NAB Show Extra. We are live. It's 1.30 right here in Las Vegas. And we're coming to you from the NAB Show Studio One, which is right in the grand lobby as you walk in the door to NAB Show. There's so much going on here. We've had interviews. We've had live shots. We've heard about the app, all kinds of stuff. And we're going to keep going for another 30 minutes. So if you get a chance, go ahead and invite your friends. You can post it on Facebook. Have people join us right here at nabshow.com. We want to show you a little bit of our setup. Up. We have Bexel cameras here at NAB Show Studio One. There's a lot going on. We have an audience. Hello, everybody. Thanks for being with us. We're pretty excited about everything that's happening right here in the lobby. This is also a spot where you can relax for a little bit, put your feet up, which is necessary if you've been walking this show floor, recharge not only yourself, but also your cell phone and everything else. We want to talk now about social media, because it's huge. So we're going to bring in Sam Stanton from Red Button TV. Sam, thanks for joining us again. Thanks for having me back. I'm excited. I see you're a very important tweeter. Did you earn this badge, or how does that working work? Working hard to become a VIT. Fantastic. We love it. B&H is doing VIT, in case you're just joining us, very important tweeters. We want to talk real quick about the numbers. The numbers of impressions and, and the, the amount of people who are tweeting and Instagramming and Facebooking, incredible, right? While we have 93,000 plus people here, we've reached over 27 million online that are engaged talking about NAB. So if you think about that, it's 290x amplification of what's going on. And the fun thing is it's just not Twitter, it's, it's Instagram. Visual is becoming a big deal. In fact, if you use an image in your post, you'll get 39% more interaction in play with that. So we're starting to see tons of selfies, of course, with our, with our fun Vegas wall over there and NAB, hashtag NAB show signs. Wow. You know, I noticed that. I feel like every tweet now is not only 140 characters, but 140 characters plus a picture, right. especially here. Really cool stuff going on. Let's talk, too, about what you guys are doing to kind of keep, keep tabs on all of it. I know it's possible for folks to sort of flood the Twitter stream, and you guys are watching that, right? Tell us about that. That's correct. With Buzz Control, we aggregate all of the conversation that's happening, moderate it, curate it, archive it. We're talking big data here. Wow. So we're able to see what is trending, what is important. Are there things that need to be addressed? What's really working? What speakers are really killing it? So you get a real-time overview of what's going on and gives you the ability to respond in real time. Absolutely. So if you're not here, which if you're watching at nabshow.com, maybe you're not, be sure to follow the hashtag nabshow because there's really so much going on. Sam, we appreciate you being with us. We'll check back in with you in a little while, and we'll have more ahead right here on NAB Show Extra. With so much technology here at NAB Show, being the VP of technology for NAB has got to be a pressure job right now. I'm joined with John Marino, who has that position. John, first of all, thanks for being with us. I enjoy being with you. That the more we can uh, spread the word about what we do here at the NAB Show, the better it is for us. Oh, good. Well, tell us a little bit. All right, folks have been out on the show floor, seen so much technology. Tell us a little bit about how you research to decide what's going to be here. Futures Park, give us the lowdown. Okay. Well, basically what we do is we work with a lot of outside groups to try to understand what would be the most important things for broadcasters to know about. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of technologies here at the show that go way beyond broadcast but have an impact on the industry overall. So what we try to do is educate our attendees as to what the next coming technologies might bring to them, as far as opportunities, as far as uh, new platforms for them to broadcast on. And um, essentially, a Futures Park is, is part of that. Now, some of the technologies at Futures Park are really breaking. Uh, we have 8K demonstrations there. That technology is, uh, is amazing, and we have lines of people trying to go and see it. And uh, you know, NHK in Japan is a very, very good research company, and, the, and they work a lot in that, in that area and develop new technologies for us. And, and they bring them to the show every year, and they just, uh, you know, are a big attraction for us. We had the gentleman from NHK here at NAB Show Studio One, which was exciting, really amazing stuff. So I know you all do quite a bit of research in advance of the show to know really what's trending, what's out there. Tell us a little bit about that, that process. Okay, we, we do the research, and we also have advisory groups that we work with. 
Uh, so the advisor groups are built up of experts who may be uh, fluent in technologies that we don't have as much background in. So by using the research that we do and the advisory groups, we're able to put together conferences and technology programs that sort of, um, you know, give the industry an, an insight as to what's coming in the future. Now that's mainly what we're focusing. What are the new things that are going to be out there three to five years from now? Wow, it's incredible. I know you mentioned 8K. Anything else come to mind about what's exciting out there, what folks are lining up to see? Well, there's a lot of advanced video technologies. There's what's called uh, IP technologies, which is really taking off now. And um, the whole thing about uh, broadcasters being able to broadcast on multiple platforms is uh, really, really getting a lot of interest now. Uh, so they're streaming, you know, 15 years ago, it really wasn't much of anything to speak of. But now you have streaming, you have uh, users generating content, uh, you have putting up on, uh, you know, programs being put up on YouTube. And it's, uh, it's really a fascinating time to be in the industry, but it's also very challenging for existing broadcasters to understand how to put all these together and to uh, provide new opportunities for their businesses. For sure, as we speak, we are doing some live streaming to the web, we're streaming to the screens here, it's, it's all over. So, John, thank you so much for being with us, we appreciate it. Okay, thank you, Carrie, nice being with you. And we hope the show goes very well from a technology point of view. <laughs>
technologies that I can use with my clients. I'm a technology pioneer and I bring new solutions for marketing to large corporations. Oh, fantastic, well we are glad you're here. I'm gonna make my way kind of around the table here. This is what live TV is all about. All right, sir, you're up next. Tell us who you are and uh, why you've come. I'm Spencer Harden, I work for Cedar Port Publications and Media and uh, we're here selling this film. Oh, fantastic. Okay, selling your film. So, how's it going? Any sales? Good. Well, we're you know we're making a lot of connections. Uh, we're trying to get into other uh, markets. And we've met with a lot of different producers, a lot of different uh, content people. So, cool. it's been a good show. Very exciting. We're glad you're here. Okay, one more. We can't leave this gentleman out. Hello, I'm Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Very nice to meet you. Hi, Paul. Nice to meet you. Tell us where you're from and what brings you here to Las Vegas. Well, I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. I actually live here, but uh, we're Sumo Lights based out of Germany and Los Angeles, California. And uh, we have the best LED lighting system in the world right now. We're selling it to everybody. Cool. Sumo lights. Look at that. They didn't even have to pay to be on live. I mean, this is a really good deal, huh, right? Absolutely. You're right place, right time. Absolutely. Thank you so much. <laughs> Fantastic. We're glad you're here. You know, there are a lot of businesses that are here, merging companies, new companies, and many of them have had the chance to be in the Sprocket Hub. So correspondent Rachel Kopchak has been there interviewing all the companies that are there. We want to check in with her. These startup companies working with Sprocket are changing the way we create and consume content. This is a glimpse of what some of that change looks like. Net2TV provides free ad-supported television to your connected TV. It's what you want, what you think you're buying when you buy a connected TV. You can watch uh, People TV or Cooking Light. It's free, it's there, it's just sit on your couch and enjoy television the way it was meant to be. Discourse Analytics is a personalization and analytics company that develops profiles, individualized profiles on everybody in your audience base when broadcasters are broadcasting to tell them why their, their audience is connecting to their, their brands and their channels through their products so that the, the broadcaster can have two-way conversations at scale with context and relevance. Sportcast is a free mobile app to capture, watch, and share the best moments at any sporting event. We're focused on amateur sports, and we're here this week at NAB to talk to other broadcasters and affiliates about using our content uh, for their local coverage of local sporting events. Wayne is a software that finds the right conversations on social media and allows you to get them into your workflow, and put them on air or on your website at the right time. More than that, we identify the audience that's actually engaged with your content and give you the ability to segment them, find the leaders, find the followers, the influencers, re-engage them and identify new market sets. Audioware is a brand new form of television network. It's interactive. Consumers want to be able to choose more and more of what they consume in terms of content. What Audioware does is it makes that possible by first making it possible for people to listen using their mobile device of all these unmuted televisions wherever they might find them stadiums, airports, sports clubs, whatever. For businesses, it brings in new customers and keeps them there longer. Maz was founded by myself. I'm a designer. I used to work at Apple, and my co-founder is from Adobe. And basically, we allow any media brand to become its own social network. And so your readers or viewers or whatever inside your app can share to social media and then see what each other is sharing. And for businesses, it's huge because you get real insight into the types of things that people like to share. So Excitem is a real-time audience engagement platform designed for local stations to engage with their live viewers on air and through their social properties from one dashboard, and that engagement happens in real time. What makes Excitem so special is that it's a multi-platform system. We support a wide area of, of communications from people calling, texting, using social media, through Facebook and Twitter, and your website and mobile application. Now, what makes it so special is that it takes a minute to actually go on air from all these different mediums, and you have a wealth of data that's flowing in to the producers, newsroom in real time. You can follow Sprocket on all social media platforms and I will continue to bring you highlights from the Sprocket Pavilion throughout the NAB show. All right, so Rachel had several of the Sprocket companies today. We're going to hear from all of them over the course of the days, so make sure you tune back in right here at nabshow.com. And as luck would have it, we are joined now by Jeremy Bauman. Luck or good planning? 
Well, I'd say a little bit of both. A little bit of both. We'll leave that up to the audience because Jeremy actually helped pick those companies. He's a part of Sprocket and really helped decide which companies were going to have the opportunity. Jeremy, tell me how you decide. Yeah, well, the process is, is very involved. We, we rely a lot on our partners, which include companies like Hearst and Google and Univision to, to help us find companies that are doing very innovative things in the early stage community. We also rely on partners in the early stage venture capital community uh, to really help create a national, uh, a national search process. So we really look for companies who have new technologies, who might be doing things that help with consumer engagement for broadcasters, who might help with analytics, and really bright entrepreneurs who really represent what we think could be the future. Did it work out that there are any specific trends? Are several of the companies in the same kind of industry? How did, how did that work out? Yeah, naturally you'll find some, some themes that emerge and um, we think some competition is good. So we have, like I said, a number of companies that do uh, second screen engagement, um, different, different processes for monetization and uh, commercialization of uh, technology, so yes. Fantastic. Jeremy, thanks so much for being with us, and we'll keep having more and more on Sprocket, too. So thanks. We appreciate it, and we'll be right back on NAV Show Extra. Hi, everybody. We have an exciting interview now. John Tesh is here at the NAB Show Studio One. You may recognize him, former host of Entertainment Tonight, CBS Sports, News. You've done so many things. John, thanks for being with us. My pleasure. You don't know that it's going to be exciting yet. I mean, it's not really that exciting, but it's nice to meet you. The pressure's on. Now yeah, you have yeah, to make it, it exciting. Now See? It yeah, 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 yeah. That's how it has to go. All right, so tell me a little bit about what brings you to NAB Show this year. I'm sorry. I've just destroyed your cameraman's foot pattern here. <laughs> Uh, we just like to look at stuff that we can uh, buy and, uh, and, and, and use over and over again. Now, I'm just, we, we're launching a show in September. It's called Intelligence for Your Life. It's a, it's a television version of our radio show, which is on about 300 uh, stations around the country. And we're shooting it a little bit differently. So we're shooting it in, in more of a high-end fashion. We're shooting with um, uh, the C300s, Canon C300. And we're using the KinoFlow lights. And uh, we're just... We, use, we do a lot of motion graphics on this show. You can see uh, a little bit of what it looks like at Tesh.com, which is our website. But uh, it's a news-adjacent show, so it really is sort of news you can use, and it features myself, uh, my son Gib, who's our, our <laughs> crazy tech guy, and my wife Connie. Uh, and so we're coming back to syndicated television for the first time in about 12, 15 years. All right, tell us what the show is about. Intelligence for your life. Right, so right, what right. kind of things will well, we see? So seeing? what's the germiest thing in the hotel, in your hotel room? What do you think it is? Is it the bedspread? Uh, is it the toilet? Is it the TV remote? TV remote, all the hands. That's right, 50,000 right. distinct and unique terms. So it's, it's yeah. not just that, but it's, new, it's news you can use. It's uh, three ways to shrink your waistline, the five ways to be a better parent, two ways to find your your purpose in life and it's very advertiser friendly so imagine so we can do you know pieces on on, on sleep deprivation or or pieces on, on on germs and we can match advertisers to that each one of the pieces is about two minutes long cool. so obviously in this day and time you can you can share them on you know on the internet sure. uh, but then it also becomes a um, uh, we've done a big deal with the, with the CW network cool. uh, and uh, we're on about 70 percent of the country and again it launches in September Wow. Okay, I think you said shrink your waistline, be a better parent, and find purpose in life. I want to sign up. That's those great. Are, those are That's three, awesome. Those well, you, yeah, you can. I could use. Yeah, 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 you can. And as a matter of fact, we could just walk right in there 
and maybe buy five or six things, we can have our own show instantly, right? Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, you, I like you, it. You heard it here first. Busy? 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 Yes. Thanks. Great talking to you. Thanks. We appreciate you stopping by the yeah. studio. Yeah. All right, we want to go to some of the interviews that we had a chance to tape right here on the set yesterday. So we want to check in with the NAB Education Foundation. Let's take a look at that. Welcome back. We are at NAB Show Studio One, and we are talking drones, which is a really hot topic right here at NAB Show this year. I'm joined by Paul Aiken, who's with the Unmanned Vehicle University in Phoenix, also owns Ride Media, right? So, Paul, tell us a little bit about the drain that you're holding. Uh, the drone that I'm holding is actually a custom Phantom 2. It has a stabilized gimbal on it, a video downlink so you can frame your shots, and it actually is a very long range uh, drone. So the stabilization really helps as far as looking at the camera. You can see that no matter what, it's staying level. The camera will give you the shot that you need, the stabilization that you need. So we take out the wobble, we take out the rolling shutter, all the bad things. Fantastic, and I know you're going to show us a little bit about how this works, right? Definitely. So, all right, we're going to have Paul walk over and put the drone on a table. We'll show you what we're doing all along. He's going to turn it so that the camera is facing us. And then here we are. I mean, that's pretty instantaneous. If you can see it on the screen, you can see our videographer as well, John McClellan. Now, tell me a little bit about why this is so great for journalists. It's so great for journalists because essentially we need less people to do the shots that we need. It's more efficient. It's faster. That's a plug and play package. You can take it on the aircraft. You can take it wherever you want. You pull it out. Two minutes, you're ready to go. Fantastic. And before folks go out and buy their next drone, so to speak, what are some of the things they need to know? I know there aren't very many rules yet. What, what's happening there? There are very few regulations actually in place at this time, but they need to know the rules so they don't get in trouble. You know, don't go over 400 feet, stay within Class G airspace, stay away from airports. And we're really going over all of these things tomorrow at our drone journalism session or dronalism session in room 257 at 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. All right, fantastic. And a lot of folks will be watching us at nabshow.com. So if they're not here in Vegas, where can they find out more information? What's a good website for them? I would say check out dji.com. You can definitely get a great drone from there, and you can learn a lot more. Or check out dslrpros.com. Oh, fantastic. Okay, Paul, let's leave you one more time. John, if you can show us, we'll see him again. This is what the drone is showing. So very cool. Paul, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. And this is NAB Show Extra. Drone shot. What do you think? Walter Colby on the camera? 
drones are no doubt drawing attention right here at NAB Show. And it's not just the drones, though. We've had plenty of celebrities also. There is star power right here. We just interviewed Don Tash. Tons of folks here. And one man who gets to meet a lot of them is Lee Hawkins. He's a Wall Street Journal reporter who gets to interview celebrities, right? Yeah. Lee, welcome. I talk a lot about the money behind celebrities. And yesterday I did a presentation with Damon John of Shark Tank, who was one of the stars here. What's great about these people, if you, you heard what John had to say about his new company, uh, these guys are very intelligent. You have to be a business person to have your brand across the television worldwide and Damon John spoke to all of these different startups about what they need to do to be competitive in the marketplace there were lots of questions that people had and it was really good all right I love Shark Tank and I am a business owner so tell me what was some of his advice to the entrepreneurs in the audience do your research was one of them he talked about a lot of companies that present their proposals to him but they haven't really done the groundwork to lead up to getting to Damon John. He wants to see you have a little bit of success on your own and to show that there is a market even on a smaller level. If you can't do it on a smaller level, then you, can, you won't make it on a larger level. He also talked about um, the selection process from the show. One thing that surprised a lot of people is they are not involved in the selection process. And if you know some of them or if you actually uh, make a proposal to them, then you're automatically disqualified uh, oh, wow. from the show because that's a conflict. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't know that. All right, let's talk about celebrities now. Tell yeah. me some of the folks who you've had the opportunity to interview. Oh, man, everybody from Lady, Lady Gaga to Clive Davis to Usher to yeah. just last week, Danica Patrick. My next one is Robert De Niro. And once again, wow. we're talking all about uh, the business behind celebrities. A lot of people don't realize that Maria Sharapova is a multi-million dollar business every year. She, she makes more money from endorsements than she does actually as on the tennis court. And the brands and how people manage their brands are very important. If you look at Miley Cyrus and Justin Bieber, they're both being challenged right now by their decisions and they have corporate partners that work with them. Michael Vick just signing with the New York Jets and yeah. this is a guy that went to prison for dog fighting. So what he's going to have to do is win over the fans in New York because a lot of them are animal rights activists and really don't want to see him on the football field. So uh, there's a lot of complexity to it and I really enjoy covering it. Cool. Well, Lee, thanks so much for coming here and telling our story and for telling us about Damon who was at the Sprocket Hub. All so right. we appreciate it. Nice to meet you, Lee. Thanks right. very much. All right, we'll be right back in just a moment right here at NAB Show Extra. You know, the theme for this year's NAB show is channel opportunity, and more folks than ever are doing just that. Attendance is up here, and this has been an extremely successful NAB, and it's only Tuesday. So stay with us right here. We're going to have live shows with Rich Demura right here on the set at 4 p.m. today. We hope you'll join him then every day at 10 and 4, and we'll join you again at 1 o'clock. So for all of us at NAB Show Extra, I'm Carrie Fairnack with CNTV. Thanks for being with us.